Over the last few months, I've been hinting or saying that in the Edge of the Empire group I'm a member of, that some of the players will be taking on the role of Game Master. And this was originally proposed, you know, to give me a chance to play, but then became a firmer idea when we realized that two of the members would be going on a long and well-deserved vacation. So what would we do in the interim? So we decided to try some mission-based uh, structures out of Age of Rebellion. And, well, that's what's happening now. We've just completed a two-session arc with one player in the Game Master's seat, and tonight started a new one. We've created fresh characters for each one to test out different parts of the system as players. I played a, a, a pretty effective sharpshooter in the first installment, and now I'm creating a more, well, less effective, but more soulful, I think, uh, smuggler pilot character. And the other guys as well are trying on new things, slicers, medics, and uh, thieves, and this sort of stuff. We've moved from, you know, combat characters to full-on, you know, face characters and, and back and forth or some kind of intermediate mix. We're really giving the system a run for its money, and I am very satisfied. This has moved a good game group playing one game with me as the Game Master into something that I've been trying to get back to for years. When I first started as a role player, everybody was a game master and everybody was a player, and that's that's my normal. But as I as I got to college, the uh, three members that were the core of my my role playing group there, we were all game masters, but the very large number of people, sometimes as many as nine, well, they weren't, and they didn't really seem too interested in picking up that mantle. They did years later, which was cool, but you know, at that time they didn't. And with each move and with each new community that I, I moved to, I'd meet one or two people that were already game masters and who were willing to, you know, run separate games. But it wasn't until just before I came to Korea that, you know, the group had reached a point where most of the people in it were willing to take on, on the game, which was uh, World of Darkness then, you know, and, and run it. So it was a real community. You know, you'd be running for a couple of weeks and then you'd play and, you know, around the table, those, those duties, responsibilities, and pleasures would go. And for a while in Seoul, I had uh, a group like this, but really it was, again, three of us and then one moved away. So then it was two of us and well, then it was just me. And so we're back. We have two guys who are running the game for our group. We have another guy who's who's running it uh, online for friends back home. We have people who, you know, haven't GM'd for a while or, or felt that they, they weren't comfortable with GMing or were worried about this, that, or the other thing, obviously, because, you know, new game, new system, you know, trying something new is always nerve-wracking. But what was really cool is they stepped in and were just naturally fun. The the situations were fun. The the interplay was fun. And getting to use the, the narrative dice seemed to, you know, from my perspective, it seemed to alleviate that hesitation that you have when you're using a new system. You know, they, they've been playing the game for eight months. They, they know what the dice do. They're very familiar with the dice. And so when the results come, you know, they're, they're ready for it. But at the same time, the dice are there supporting them. It's the first time they've been in the Game Master chair for this, for this game system. It's the first time they've been running a game for, you know, an extended period of time. So that sort of feeling of, of hesitation, of, of being a newcomer. And as I'm watching, the, the dice rolls come, and without really missing a beat, they're they're moving on. They're making their interpretations. You know, what's a triumph going to mean in this in this scene? What's a threat going to mean? What's an advantage going to mean? And uh, how can I apply it? How can I make it interesting? 
And, you know, keeping an eye on the clock, we only have so many hours to play before, you know, we're going to be called away to do the next thing, the next obligation. And, and uh, being able to drop a cliffhanger right in the right place to make a dramatic twist. Now, we've had, uh, we've had a commanding officer in the, in the first series suddenly turn around and reveal herself as a, a double agent traitor that now we have to, to, to capture. And, oh, we hated her. <laughs> and in, in this one, we've infiltrated an enemy base and everything was going really well. And then suddenly, whoosh, you know, the tables are turned and see you next week. It's awesome and fun and the escalating stakes. And part of this is Star Wars. Part of this is that the, the group has, you know, gelled over the last few months uh, gaming together. Part of it is the native skill of the people who were, who were playing. And part of it, a debt is owed to the system itself. The narrative dice are a success. It's interesting to see other people using them for, for me. I liked the idea of them when I read it. I liked the idea once I started to use it. I liked the fact that my, my thoughts about how long it would take for a group to become familiar, to become acclimatized, to using these dice, to become accustomed to it. I thought it would take longer than it actually did. It, it happened faster and it was entertaining. And the really cool part, again, for me, was that everybody around the table started to contribute right away. You know, oh, could we get a boost die for this? Or shouldn't there be a setback for that? And, and, uh, and so on. Like really engaged in not just, I want to shoot him, but this is the environment in which this you know, action is taking place. And all, all of these factors, which would normally be imagined or not imagined separately, you know, guy over there might be imagining catwalks and, and chains in very precise detail. And the person over here might just be thinking, well, you know, they're this far apart. You know, and role-playing games are phenomenal in the fact that you can have five players and a game master sitting around the table and six different complementary imaginings of what's happening. In this case, as we're all involved in generating the die roll and as we're all involved in, you know, interpreting the die roll, we're all involved in how it's being imagined. Very rarely do I hear, oh, I was picturing it differently. You know, it's, it's interesting, fast engages the whole table, builds that, that tension. It's not just one guy rolling by himself and everyone else, you know, you know, taking the opportunity to check their phone or whatever while he uh, checks his target number. We're all leaning in. Oh, I can help with that, with that die pool. And oh, what about this? And good fun. So I've been given a great gift as a player, as a game master. I'm seeing a group blossom into the kind of group that that I truly enjoy, uh, an interactive and uh, complementary group that all take turns playing each of the roles. And I'm really looking forward to seeing how this raises the stakes on what's to come in each of our budding campaigns. I've got some great game masters sitting around the table, and I suspect I've got a few more ready to develop and soon who knows what kind of hijinks we can get up to in a galaxy far far away <laughs>